In this video, we're going to learn how to use GPSQL with CHDB. In case you've not used it before, CHDB is an in-process version of ClickUs. So it works with many languages, but in this video, we're going to focus on the Python variant. And GPSQL lets you run SQL and plot large data sets in the IPython shell and Jupyter Notebooks. So we're gonna start by launching the IPython shell and we're gonna explore some data from Jeff Sackman's tennis data set. So this is on GitHub and it has loads of different types of data about tennis. We're gonna look at rankings and the players of those rankings. So we're gonna start by importing the URL retrieve function and then we're gonna download a bunch of files that contain rankings from the 1970s up to the present day. We'll sort of leave that running for a little bit. We'll speed it up a bit and you can see we've now got all those files downloaded. So now we're gonna import from CHDB the DB API module, and then we're gonna connect with that and we'll tell it we wanna store the data in atp.chdb. So that's the name of the folder. And then we're gonna call this magic function. So load x, tell it to load SQL, and then we're gonna tell it that the SQL magic needs to point at that connection to chdb and we'll give it an alias of chdb. We're also going to then set the display limit to be zero. So we're going to disable the display limit. And now whenever we want to write a query against CHDB, we can use this percent, either percentage SQL or percentage percentage SQL for multiple lines. And we can say, for example, describe file and then ATP rankings files. We're also going to make it do a bit of a compact output and we're going to tell it not to null everything. And you can see it comes back. This is the schema of those CSV files. We've got a ranking date, which is an N64, a rank in 64, player in 64, and points also in 64. We can then use the percentage SQL magic to say select star from file and then pass in our CSV path and get just one row back. And you can see it comes back with uh, one of the rows from the ranking CSV file. Now you'll notice that the date is in a bit of a weird format. So let's see if we can tidy that up. So we'll, this time we'll do a percentage percentage SQL and we're gonna use the replace clause. And then inside there we can replace one of the, or any of the fields in there and with a different value. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use to date, parse date time 32 best effort, to string on the ranking date, and then we're gonna read from our ranking files. And you can see it then comes back with a much better date format. Now, if we wanna store any data in CHDB, we need to create a named database as the default one isn't persisted. So we're gonna create a database called ATP. And then we're gonna go and update our query to add a create table statement for ATP rankings. We'll tell it we wanna use the merge tree engine. So that means you're always appending data to the table. And we're gonna tell it that our order by or sorting key is gonna be the ranking date. And we'll run that and then what we can do next is say we're gonna select star from the ATP rankings table and get back 10 records. And it's the same data that we saw when we queried the CSV file directly. Now we're going to look at how to get the players because at the moment we just have player ID. So we're going to download the ATP players CSV file from Jeff Sackman's data set. And then we're going to create ourselves a ATP players table again, merge tree engine, order by player ID this time. And then we're going to select all the fields and we're just going to do a bit of fixing uh, on the date of birth so that it's a proper date 32 type in this case because it has values from before 1970. So we need to use the date 32 type. And again, we're reading from this time ATP players.csv. And then we can write a query against that table, get 10 rows, and you can see it comes back with the players and various metadata about them. Now let's write a query to see what were the maximum points that a player got over time and what was their ranking when they got that number of points. And you can see it comes back. So Djokovic got the most ever points that anyone's got. So just to quickly explain what points are. So you get points depending on how well you do in a tournament and how difficult the tournament is. So if it's a Grand Slam tournament, for example, to win it, and you win it, you get 2,000 points. If you lost in the final, you'd get 1,300. And you can kind of see that Djokovic in 2016, that was like his best year. So he's basically winning everything. And then you can see Nadal had a really good year in 2009. And interestingly, Murray had a really good end of 2016. And then you can see there are other people there as well. Now, what we can do is we can go back and save our query. So we're gonna save this query and give it a name, best points, and we'll tell it not to execute the query. And then we can actually then write a query against that named query. So it converts it to a CTE and we're going to say, I want to get query that where the rank was one. And you can see it comes back and you'll notice if you look down the bottom of this list, 
the the rank there must have been less points being given out because you can see as we go back in time the points are going down and down and down and the quality of the the players was not going down so we'll assume there were less points being given out we can also query using parameters so we can say i want to set a rank parameter of 10 and then we can write a query to find when were there players who had a rank inside the top 10 starting from the earliest date to the most recent date you can see then we put in our where clause using the curly curly brackets on each side with the name of the variable and we'll do it by who was who had the least amount of days between when they were lot first in the top 10 and last in the top 10 and you can see there are a bunch of people who were there for just a single week so Luca Pui was the last one uh, in 2018 and then there are some other people who were that the time between the first time and the last time was maybe two or three weeks. Now with JupySQL, we can also do some limited charting. So you can do box plots or histograms. So let's write ourselves a query that we're going to save as players per rank. We won't execute it. And we're going to select distinct player and rank where the rank is less than or equal to 100. So what this does is it finds the distinct, yeah, when, when were, what was the each ranking that a player got to. So it will basically give us like a histogram of the number of players that got to each ranking. And then we're going to import some functions from the SQL ggplot module. And then we can create ourselves a plot. So we're called ggplot. The table is players per rank. The width underscore is players per rank. And then we're going to pass in our mapping. So we'll say the x value is going to be rank. I will give it a fill color and then a color. And then we'll say we want to build the histogram and we'll do 100 bins. So it's going to be 100, there's 100 rankings, so we'll do 100 bins. And then when we're working inside IPython, what we need to do next is save that figure somewhere. So we'll save it to the, the file players per rank.png. And then I've got a little utility function called display image that allows us to display it inside this REPL. You can see it's got a very nicely sloping curve. So very few people got to number one and lots of people got to number 100. We can then save that notebook. So we can call it, use the notebook magic and say chdb.ipynb. We'll exit there and we'll launch Jupyter Notebooks. And then we can come into our notebook and you can see we've got all the code that we just ran in IPython. And so we can run the bits that are not going to go and create a new database. So we'll connect to chdb and we'll load in our SQL magic. We could then run the query to describe the file and you can see it comes back the same results. We could do a select star from the file, same results. We could fix our date. Again, you see it's all, it's all fixed. We can then go and choose to query that ATP rankings table that we created before. We can query the table, ATP players table that we created for before. We can find the maximum points like we did earlier at the best points. We could also do that. Remember that parameterized query and we can then have a look at the one which creates the chart. And then this time when we create the plot, it's going to show it straight away rather than requiring us to save it somewhere. So if you found this video interesting and you're interested in learning more about CHDB, you might want to check out this video up here where we learn how to use it to query pandas data frames.